Thank you for clicking on that video and checking us out. I'm your host, Brian Cohn, and we got some news. These have actually been uh, in the store for a bit. Uh, they have released and history, a uh, historic anthology six and explorer anthology one. The first anthology from Explorer, which if you do not know, they're basically trying to make Explorer turn into Pioneer. And this is basically their first step getting there. Um, so let's go through some of these cards, see if it's worth it. As you can see, they are 4,000 gems, which equates to basically 20 packs. So let's start off with Historic Anthology 6. Um, <clears throat> you get, oh, come on, let's work. Uh, Chalice of the Void, a very, very good, iconic card through magic history. Um, I think this is a great thing to have in a historic. Um, there's a lot of decks that basically Chalice of the Void will basically break, but it's actually there for that reason. It's actually in, it is a staple in modern. So modern, like historic is turning into modern more or less. So I think having this card in there will, uh, Open it up for other decks. Tarmogoyf, another modern staple. Um, I don't think this is a great card to have in it, um, only because like you have to build around Tarmogoyf. Getting four copies of it, like we'll get into that. But Tarmogoyf is a great deck. Um, anyway, moving on. Brexton Metamorph. I looked at this card. I'm like, I, I don't see why it's here. Uh, we have other cards in historic that basically make a mirror of something else. Uh, artifact or creature. Like we got plenty of those. Some of them are for three drops and granted it only hits creatures, but eh, whatever. So basically you can put this down on turn three, pay two life and it gets out there. Whatever. Um, Layla, the Blade Reforge. I took a look at this card and I'm like, I don't get it. It's technically a commander card, but honestly, I think it may make a splash into historic. It is legendary, which is bad, but when it gets in there, you can swing in, you can play a card from the top. If you don't play it, it gets plus one, plus one counter. I actually do think this is a pretty good card that will splash. Ghost, I don't even know how to say this. Ghost Sinti of Life Origins. Basically, this is going to be going into your shrine decks. It is technically a card that was built in Commander. Historic does have a lot of shrines in it, so this could make the cut in your shrine deck. Uh, basically, play Warburg, return an enchantment card from your graveyard, put it on the battlefield, all shrines are enchantments, and then you create another shrine. I can see this doing okay. I don't think it's going to be great because it is a four drop. Most shrines are um, basically one to three drops, except for the major ones, which are five drops, which is Wilberg anyway. So I can see that it may make it. We'll see. Um, a Avison Angel of Hope. Iconic commander card. Iconic commander card. If you play angels, which I do, you play this in your commander deck. It is an 8-drop, eight 8-8, eight, eight, makes everything indestructible, flying vigilance, indestructible, everything gets indestructible. Fantastic card to have in there. I, Orphomancer, however you want to say this. How is this a rare? I don't know. Um, at the beginning, okay, like, you get a plus one, plus one death touch. We have other cards that do something very, very similar. I don't think this is going to make a splash. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. Unless you're going tribal. Uh, target player, mills 10 cards. Glimpse of the Unthinkable. I think it's an okay card. If you're playing that mill strategy, I could see it being played. Um, the Foundry, Retrofitter. I have this in one of my commander decks. It's a fantastic commander deck card. Uh, untap, uh, untap it. You two pay one, you get a, uh, a servo. If you sacrifice a servo, 
you make a thopter and if you sacrifice a thopter you get a four four it's actually in one of my artifact builds so commander card all creatures get negative one negative one for four i don't get it i don't say it great i could be wrong those of you who play historic go ahead and leave a comment in the thing below tell me what you think and then artifact lands that are indestructible all 10. so here's my thoughts about historic anthology six i think there are some cards in here that are absolutely fantastic like if you want tarmogoyf granted you're gonna have to get all four and they're all mythics okay my issue with this is that as you saw a lot of these in my opinion are commander cards like commander card possibly commander card it could see some play uh it was made for commander i think it could possibly see some play but i really don't think because of the legendary uh this one i don't see getting played this one i can see but that's going to be a regular commander card possibly commander card i don't see this being played but the issue is is that over half of these are going to be uncommons I, I know I buy a lot more than a lot of you out there, but I have 60 uncommons. I am close to buying all the uncommons or all the uh, commons in here. They have zero uncommons, if I remember right. They're all rare and mythics. If you have some wild cards in the back, you're like, I'm never going to play Tom or Goyf. I'm never like, I'm not going to play this. I'm not going to play that. I really see this as more of a historic commander thing you can buy 20 packs and get three rares because when you buy packs you get uh every six packs you get a rare or mythic so i would rather just buy my 20 packs with the gems i would spend on this i would get wild cards and then most likely i'm going to get enough wild cards to pick up the ones that I want. I mean, if I wanted to play Chalice of the Void, not my type of thing. Okay. Um, Tom or Goyf, Okay. But you can see with me, I got plenty of wild cards. I don't need to, like, I'm not going to buy this. I know other people out there. I still think that you should just buy 20 packs. You will get uh, enough. Wild, you should get enough wild cards to get the lands that you want. Um, most of these lands technically were banned in modern. So what's really the point? Because if they're going to eventually get to modern, I don't see them. I, I, they, and I'm not saying that they get like they probably lose their indestructible. And then, yeah, I see these more of the commander cards type of thing. I really don't see the like if you just need to get a few of these. Just spend your wild cards. It's going to be so much more cheap, uh, cheaper for you than actually buying this. Okay, that's enough on that. Save your money. Long story short, save your money. Just use your wild cards. Spend the money on packs. You'll get three, like you'll get at least three rare, uh, three rare wild cards anyway. You may get one or two more, especially with uh, 20. I think you should get like a total of five wild cards uh, with 20 packs. You want to see me open up 20 packs to prove that we can do that later um <clears throat> okay now moving over to their first explorer anthology one first car uh Kletos, terra of the geist for those of you that played pioneer you know this was a pioneer staple it is amazing in those black aggro decks i think this is a great card to have in there if you were running them, like if you were running the black, you had four copies. Um, Hyderabad Walker. I don't remember if this was played all that much um, in Pioneer. I don't remember seeing it that often, but I can see it being fun. I don't think it's going to make a splash. It could be wrong. Um, Supreme Verdict. Oh, my gosh. This is a pioneer card 100 
if you're playing control colors, you have at least two of these. This spell cannot be countered. Destroy all creatures. It's fantastic. <clears throat> um, mausoleum. One. Rur, rur. I always have issues saying that. Flying. Whenever another spirit enters uh, under your control, it gets a plus one plus one until end of turn. You sacrifice it, counter, insert sorcery, uh, unless it's going to X, where X is its power. This is another card I do remember seeing in some builds in Pioneer, it, especially the uh, spirit decks that were running around. It's a very fun card. I actually do like this card in my spirit deck. Siege Rhino, Trample, enters the battlefield. Each opponent loses three life and you gain three life. I mean, look at the colors. It, it's right on there. Um, I don't, again, this is another card that I don't see being played much in Pioneer. I haven't been in the format for a while, so you can tell me down in the description below. Um, I think this is an okay card. Like, do I think it'll uh, do stuff and ex uh, explore? Probably. I could see people playing two or three of these. I mean, it is a four drop, a four or five trampler. It's actually a pretty good card. Um... Tireless Tracker. Another one of those really good cards. Uh, I remember this being played all the time because you get that artifact. It's more about the clue. You pay three, you get this guy out, and if you need to draw a card, you draw it, he gets bigger. Pretty dang good. Or is it she? I don't know. Kind of hard to tell. Okay. Slaughter Games. This uh, can't be countered. I already like it. <laughs> uh, choose a non non land card name. Search for uh, search target opponent's graveyard hand and library for any number of the cards with that name and exile them. Then that player shuffles. This is one of those cards. I can see this being played in a sideboard. Maybe two copies. Uh, Rally of the Ancestors. Return each creature card with mana value x or less from your graveyard to the battlefield exile those creatures at the beginning of your next upkeep exile this card i don't i don't know what this would be put in probably like an aggro deck where because boros it, like was very popular in pioneer when i was playing it um and a lot of those cards do have like low cost, number one, and there was a lot of haste. So maybe it's it will be put in there. I don't know. Um, Tainted Remedy. Finally. They finally have a card in here that can say life gain. Screw you! A very good cyborg. When they gain life, instead of gaining life, they lose life. I love this card. Screw life gain that goes like it has been in explorer uh okay alicia who smiles at death uh whenever it attacks you can pay a white and a black if you do return target creature card with power two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tap and attacking i do think i don't see this being played in explorer if it had haste i could see it um but for a three drop and they get a turn to go around it. I don't see it being played in Explorer. I actually do look at this card and I'm like, commander card. It's a commander card. That's my opinion. Um, Elvish Mystic, Lawn Aware Elves. It's technically a commander card. Um, the reason is, is because most people have copies of Lawn Aware Elves, but um, it's basically Lawn Aware Elves just with a different name. That's why it works in commander. Uh, I could see this being played in the elf decks. We'll see if it makes a big splash. Uh, Tremor uh, Battle Rage. Uh, I think this card is really, really good. If it has more than four power, it gains Trample and Double Strike. If it doesn't have four power, it just gains Double Strike. Double Strike is always powerful. As an instant, it's very good. Titan Strength. <laughs> oh, I love my uh, Archelite Phoenix deck. and that, This one was in it, so I'm looking forward to this card. Um, target creature gets plus three, plus one until end of turn, then scry one. 
Very, very good card, especially for a one drop. Battlewise Hoplet. Historic, whenever you, basically you already, uh, if you target it, you get a plus one, plus one counter, and then you get to scry. Fantastic card. One of my favorite, also my Arc Like Phoenix decks. Favorite Hoplite, Historic. Cast a spell on it, put a plus one, plus one counter, and prevent all damage that would be dealt to this tar this creature this turn. Oh my gosh, I love it. <clears throat> Destroy all enchantments. Back to nature. Good sideboard card. Uh, I could actually see this being played in a lot of decks, in the sideboard at least. Also, I can see that being played in Commander, being honest. Searing Blood, two damage to target creature, and if it dies, then it does three damage to uh, creature's controller. I can see this being played in a lot of burn decks. Not too happy about that. Uh, a deck may have, you can have as many as these you want. If you sacrifice six of them, you can go search for a demon card, put it on the battlefield, and then shuffle. Uh, this one, I know people were trying to make a combo around it. I don't know if it ever took off. Don't quote me on it. I'm not exactly sure. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but it's a fun card. I don't know if it'll see play. Uh, Insult Artifact. Aura. Uh, target Artifact is a creature with base power. Tustin is 5-5 five, five, as additional to its other types. I don't know. I don't see this being played. I could be wrong, uh, especially if you're running a heavy artifact build. I think it may be a commander card. Maybe like, now it wouldn't even be a commander card. And uh, Dark Seal's Capital. This completes the artifact. If you bought both of these, you would get all artifact lands that are indestructible. <clears throat> this is promotes land uh, land destruction, in my opinion. Um, so what do I think about this? As you can tell, I'm excited about a lot of these cards because I've seen a lot of these played in uh, Pioneer, which this is trying to move to Pioneer. But here's another thing. This side has 10 commons. This side, one, two, three. Three commons, four commons, excuse me, and everything else is uncommon, rare, or mythic. If you spent getting 20 packs, you could not come close to what you would need to build the decks you would need to go around. And granted, this is all like, honestly, I, I'm giving this as a review to tell you because of how I play, and granted, I don't play Explorer, but honestly, this is making me want to get into Explorer. This is just proving my point that I should not get into Historic. That's the way I look at it. Great iconic cards over here, but let's face it, if I wanted these cards, I'd rather spend you know, my gems on the packs. I would probably get enough, I would probably get close to getting all the wild cards that I would need to actually buy the ones that I needed because most people are sitting around with a bunch of freaking commons anyway, just sitting there not doing anything. So yeah, I don't give a shit about the lands. So that means you're only paying for half, which again, most of these, in my opinion, are commander cards anyway. Over here, very few are commander cards. I'm thinking maybe two, maybe three are commander cards and or excuse me, purely commander cards, purely commander cards. Like some of them will see commander play, but most of them are going to see play in Explorer. And if they're going to be in the main board, they're definitely going to be on the sideboard. So I really see as Explorer Anthology one to be the better of the two. Granted, if you're like, I wanna get an Explorer, I didn't like Pioneer and blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine, don't get it. No sweat off my back. If you're a big historic player, honestly, if you don't have a lot of wild cards and you have a little extra dough, Chalice of the Void, it's definitely gonna see play. 
Tarmogoyf. You get to finally build around Tarmogoyf. If you're a shrine player, you got that. But again, it, Historic is so expensive. Especially if you're getting into it late in the game that you're not going to have the cards to build around it. And if you are in Historic and you play a lot of Historic, normally you have your favorite deck. You're not going to need all of these cards. It seems like a waste to me, especially since half of them are commons. While over here, 25% are commons. I mean, you're already getting more value. Maybe they don't have as many mythics. Let's see, one mythic. Okay, they don't have as many mythics. They literally only have one myth, uh, one mythic, while this one I think has three. Three, four. Yeah, you're getting more mythics for your price. So yeah, if you want all these mythics, go ahead. Spend your money on Historic Anthology 6. If you actually would need them, I say use your wild cards. And this is, I, I put my money where my mouth is. Yeah, I'm buying them. Expect a uh, Explorer deck coming up soon. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.